Hello, church. How are you going? Usually, you see me as an MC or as an interpreter. This shows that nobody else is here. That's why today I'm sharing my sermon with you guys. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you, ICCFGF, uh, for this opportunity to share the Word of God. It's an honor for me. And usually when any pastors came to our church and they share the Word of God, they will introduce, oh, this is my husband and this is my wife. I'm not married yet, but I still have my plus one. This is my mom. <laughs> Say hi, mom. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's quite funny because today I left home at 6.30. I live in Usadua, and today there's like a road closure. So I also want to say hi to some of people at home in Usadua who's connecting with us through online service. Hi, guys. Enjoy your Sunday at home. You are the chosen one to stay at home. <laughs> All right. So a few weeks ago, I, with my mom and I, we did a health checkup. Anyone here doing annual checkup, annual health checkup usually? Some of you, maybe? Yeah. Well, in our 20s, we usually check our wallet. Do we have money or not, right? After turning 30 and 40 plus, every year we do annual health checkup to see if we have the stars on our lab result or not, which means that we got cholesterol, diabetic, or any other things. So my mom and I, we went to, to do our health checkup a few weeks ago. And that led me to think, if we check our physical health regularly, how often do we check our spiritual health? And that idea brought me to my message today. It's a very simple message, short message. Other preacher might say it's a short message and they ended up in one hour. Today, it's going to be 20 minutes because other <laughs> otherwise we're going to get kicked out of this building. So 20 minutes, this message my intention is only to invite you and to encourage you to do a self-reflection on how far you have been walking with God. Where are we with God? And to do that, today I do this acronym, three C's, for our spiritual checkup to help give us some framework of thinking. Okay, so the first C is connection. Say it with me, connection. Right, let's read the word of God from Genesis 2, 15 and 18. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Usually this verse is quoted a lot for marriage, you know, to, for wedding. But I think the essential part of this verse is about connection. God sees that we human are designed to be connected to something and to someone. That's why when we are walking in our day-to-day -day life and we are lonely, we don't have anyone to talk to, we don't have God, we don't have people around us, we, we felt alienated, we felt unwholesome. That's because we are designed to be connected. And actually this morning, as I said earlier, uh, we left home at 6.30 <laughs> because of road closure. So of course we ended up at McDonald because that's the only place that opened for breakfast. And my mom and I, when we were waiting to pay, in front of us there was a, a couple, let's say a Westerner couple. And it's just 7 a.m. in the morning, but their PDA is very, was very hot. Public display of affection. Now, I'm an Indonesian, and I, but I'm not a prude. Um, so I kind of like, you know, understand. But I really wanted to say, pardon my language, get a roommate. But I, I you know, I hold it in because at that moment, God reminded me that what they crave is actually connection. So we human are designed to crave connection ever since the beginning and even until now. And not only that, 
if we see further in Genesis 3, 8 to 9, then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? So in this scene, we have been, you know, in the previous scene, we were in the Garden of Eden, and God has created man and woman, and they put them in the garden. And in this scene, we can see the direct connection that human, Adam and Eve, had with God. They can hear, they could hear the sound of the Lord as he was walking. They could see the Lord walk in the Garden of Eden. And even when God called them in the, the like the first after this, they could answer. That was the original communion of human and God, the original connection. Because the Garden of Eden is the symbol of the presence of God. And only in the presence of God, we can be connected to Him. So back in the days, there was no medium. There was only God and human in the Garden of Eden. But the essential truth, the essential foundation is still there, that we all need connection to God. And now, as we live in the New Testament era, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Jesus said this, we can get connected to Father, to our Father, only through Jesus Christ. And what does this mean? It means that we can ask ourselves, have we been connected to the right source? Have we been connected to our God, to our Father? Carol, do you have mobile phone, right? What happened when your mobile phone battery, like 5% or 10%? You charge it. And how often do you charge it? Every day, once a day maybe twice, right? So imagine us as a human, we are like our smartphone. We are operated with the battery, right? We can be turned on if our battery is there. But if we are not connected to the power source, then we won't have any energy. We won't have any uh, electricity to work, to be turned off to be turned on. So same case with God. If we are not connected to the right source of Jesus, then we will not be able to have the strength to go on in our daily life. If we are not connected to the Father through Jesus Christ, to the right source, then we can't go on. The next question is, how often do you connect with God? Do you connect with God once a day, just like how you charge your phone? Do you connect with God three, four times a day? Or do you connect with God every moment? I've always thought that connecting with God is such a big word that we need to spend and allocate a separate time to do, you know, meditating and stuff. But now I realize that connecting with God is not as hard as we make it. Connecting with God can be as simple as, thank you, Lord, for today. I am so grateful for my family. I'm so grateful for my health. I'm so grateful that even though today is a hard day, but you give me strength. Connecting to God is as simple as that. We make it hard. So, Ask yourself, have you been connected to God? That's our first checkpoint. Have we been connected to the right source? And how often have we been connected to Him? Okay, so I'll leave you with that. And how can you get connected to God? Through prayer, through worship, when we were worshiping together, I felt like God's presence is here. And we could really feel the heart of God is poured in this place. Through the scriptures, 
because the scriptures can strengthen, can teach us, can direct us. And we can also get connected with God through, through other things that we couldn't even imagine. For example, this morning, God reminded me of something and that's how I felt connected to him. So that's the first C. So what was the first C again? Connection. Now the second C is, let's read together, communication. In the past three years, I also coach public speaking and communication. And that's why I have personal interest in developing my communication and also public speaking skill. But one thing that is quite funny for me is that some theory that we learn cannot really be applied in like the Christian uh, framework. For example, in public speaking or communication, it is said that before you establish connection, you must communicate. So you must communicate first before you establish connection. But in, you know, as a Christian, I believe that we should as the bliss, our connection to the right source, Jesus Christ, before we can make our communication to him meaningful. Because if we get connected to the wrong source, then our communication won't matter. So that's one thing that I learned, that even though communication might seem like, ah, yeah, you know that communication, it's just about speaking, speaking, speaking. It is not about speaking. Communication is a two-way street. So there, there are three elements in it. You need a person who say the word or say the message. You need the medium to send the message. And you also need a person who receive the message or who listen. So you need a speaker, a listener, and a medium. And in this case, when we want to communicate with God, when we pray, for example, prayer is our medium to him. If we say our prayer, we are the speaker and God is our listener. And maybe you said, yeah, Natalie, but I've done it. You know, I've done it very often. But have you allowed God to communicate with you? Have you allowed him to say things to you and you just stay there silently listen now there is like one first that i really like about this it's from james 1 verse 19 everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to become angry now husbands i see you you must quote this verse often and say it to your wife, right? I see you. I understand. But that's not just what it is. If we break it down, this verse, everyone should be quick to listen. What does quick to listen mean? Quick to listen means that you want to learn something. That's why you want to listen. If you don't want to learn something new, if you are not willing to be a learner, then you won't listen. For example, miscommunication often happens when people speak things and then the other people seem to listen, but they listen to reply, not listen to understand. So when we speak, let's say I speak to Fikta and I said this blah, 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 and Fikta already have something in his mind to tell it to me, it means that he listened to reply. But when he listened with open mind and open heart, with a good intention, then it means that he listened to understand and try to give solution to me. So quick to listen means that we all need to adopt a learner's mentality. When we are walking with God also, every day God can reveal something new. We need to quick to listen. Next, slow to speak. One of my friends, um, he's an introvert, by the way, and he said, Nat, you know, 
this verse really suits me well. I'm quick to listen, I'm slow to speak. So that's fine if I don't speak in front of people, right? That's not what it means. So slow to speak here means that before you speak, you discern, you think. Is it true what you're going to say? Is it kind? Is it useful? Will it be a blessing to build someone's up? Or will it be, you know, an obstacle that can trip people down? So before you speak, think and discern. Let Holy Spirit bless you with the wisdom. And last, slow to become angry. I believe that when we get angry, it means that there's something happening, right? Emotionally triggered and everything. So I feel like if God teach us, for us to be slow to become angry, it means that we can listen and communicate without judgment. Usually what happens is when we speak to someone or when we listen to someone, we already have some predisposition or judgment in our mind. Oh, sis like that. Oh, it's going to be, yeah, just, that's just how she is. But if we really are willing to listen with no judgment, then you will be surprised how God can reveal many things to you and how God can use you to help many people just by lending your ear to listen without judgment. Maybe when you pray, you don't, you don't know how to pray. God says that even when you don't know how to pray, the spirit within you will lead you and will teach you how to pray, will intercept and bring forward to God all the things that is deeply buried within your heart. Or maybe you think, yeah, Natalie, but I've been praying, but I haven't got confirmation yet. Maybe you haven't allowed enough time for God to speak to you or to confirm to you. I mean, to be very honest with you, I also want instant answer from God. I want my prayer to be answered just like I order my drink in a vending machine, you know. I put the coin in, press the button, and then boom, the drink come out. We want our prayer to be answered right away by God, but that's not always happen. So there's also, we need to have faith to believe that when God is not saying anything to us, He's still there and He's still good. He will answer us in His own time. I have been praying for uh, new stuff to help uh, our family business. And it's been like two months. We got some people to be interviewed, but there's no one right yet. We keep praying. And instead of getting new stuff, one of my staff actually got resigned uh, last week. So if we think about it, God, what do you want to say to me? It's, it's quite hard to understand. But then because I believe that if I connect to the right source, God, and if I open my communication line with God, He can reveal to me as what He wants in his own time. So I keep on praying, and maybe in the next few days or a few weeks, I can share good news to you, hopefully. But I believe also for your own struggle, if you have something that you have been praying on for many, many years, or many, like almost all your life, God listens to you. Keep on praying, keep on knocking because he will answer at his right time. So the second check up point is, have you been speaking to God or have you been communicating with God? If we've been speaking to God, it means we only say things to him. And you know, we feel like it's enough, but if we've been communicating with God, it's like a two ways relationship. We say it to God, 
and God also say things to us and we listen. So ask yourself, have you been communicating with God? Have you been allowing God some time to really speak and confirm what you want him to confirm to you? And last, communion. Let's read together. Communion. In the dictionary, communion means the sharing or exchanging intimate thoughts and feelings, especially when the exchange is on a mental or spiritual level. As Christian, communion is a time for us to commune with God, a chance for us to bring ourselves before the Lord and partake in the life he has given us through his death and resurrection. One interesting thing about this is God is always there constantly. His love, his forgiveness, his salvation is constant. No matter who you are, what you are, what you have done, he is constantly good. It is our choice to partake it or not. Same with when you go to the church and you get bread and wine for the communion, right? It is your choice to partake it or not. God will always open it up for you. And when we're talking about bread and wine in the communion, Jesus said, do this as a remembrance of me. Now, if you think about it, communion is also a sacred time of fellowship with God, where believer remembers Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. And also a time to be in community with other fellow believer, to be united as a body of God. But if we take that into our daily life, we eat bread and we drink water, for example, because it is necessary for our daily life. And same with our spiritual life. We are in communion with God because it is necessary for us to live. So we partake in his presence, we connect with God and we communicate with him we become one with him because it is necessary for us as part of his kingdom. And I have this good quote from a book by John Owen, Communion with God. Our communion with God consists in his communication of himself to us with our return to him of that which he requires and accepts, flowing from that union which in Jesus Christ we have in him. So the root is in our relationship with God, being together with him. So we can only get connected to the source if we are in the communion with our God. And this is also another verse that reminded us a simple but fundamental truth about communion with God. Essentially, communion with God is remaining in Him. John 15, 4, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So if you read the verses after this, it will be repeated several times. And repetition emphasize the importance of this fundamental truth. So communion is not just one-time choice. It is your choice to make your communion with God your lifestyle, a part of your life, a part of yourself. You can only connect with God regularly if you remain in Him. So if you feel lonely, abandoned, Maybe if you feel like your spiritual health is dry and unmotivated, or if you felt like there's something missing, I'm not wholesome, maybe you just need to remain in Him, get back, get connected back to the right source, our God, Jesus Christ. So the last checkup point is, have we been in communion with God and also our community. So what is the three 
spiritual checkup. The first one is connection. The second one, communication. And the third one, communion. So ask yourself this, these questions to evaluate your spiritual checkup. Have you been connected to the right source, to Lord Jesus Christ? How often have you been connected to God? Have you communicated with God? Have you listened to Him with no judgment and with no predisposition, with open heart and open mind? Have you prayed and con convey all the desire in your heart to God often? Have you been in communion with God and with your community? Ask yourself these questions because God wants you to grow. God wants you to be wholesome in Him. And of course, we cannot do it alone. That's why in Ephesians 6, 18, it says that, Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kind of prayers and requests. Prayer is our medium for us to speak to God, to communicate to God. So I would like to invite you to take a few moments to close your eyes, to open your mind and to open your heart, to really let God speak to you, to really let God connect with you. Father God, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for today, new day that you have given us, a new day of fellowship with our fellow believers, a new day of fellowship with you. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings, and we thank you because you are Jesus. You are our Lord and our God and our, sal and our salvation. You are constantly good, Lord. You never change. Lord, we thank you because you know the deepest desire of our heart. Search my heart, Lord. Search my heart. Speak to me, Lord. And make me new. Lord, we pray that you will renew us with the transformation of our mind and our spirit in you. So that we can be more and more like Jesus. Lord, we pray that today we can restore that connection with you, Lord. If there are some people who need you right now, Lord, I pray, we pray, Lord, that you pour out your spirit and touch them, Lord. Holy Spirit, speak to them. Holy Spirit, touch them. Let your connection be repaired, restored, and renewed, Lord. Let your word speak to them, to us, to our life, Lord. Lord, I pray that you use us to be your blessings. I pray that you restore all the, bro the broken relationships among our family, our colleagues, wherever we are, and most importantly, our relationship with you. I also pray that, Lord, you give us ears that are willing to listen to you with no judgment with no prejudice heart that are hungry to know you better and better mind that are renewed in your spirit to be like you even more lord i pray that you bless your people with a new spirit new wisdom and new wine i pray that you bless your people lord so that they can remain in you and get connected to the right source so that their life can be fulfilled and wholesome and they will not feel like they are alone anymore lord i pray that you grant us peace that goes beyond any understanding joy that is more than any riches in this world love 
that cover all weakness and mistakes and your grace lord your grace that save us that allows us to be your family lord i pray just as the song that we just sang just now that you will bless your people you will keep them you will put your face upon them and you will give them peace thank you lord may all god's people say amen amen thank you everyone happy sunday god bless you